Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 15th of April 2019 and the time has just gone 11.50 British summer time. It's been a fairly quiet start to the European session today. Um, we've had no major uh, economic news out over the last number of days. Over the weekend, we heard from US uh, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, who said that uh, um, trade talks between the US and China continue to go well, and he believes that they're sort sort of kind of in, in the kind of end, end zone uh, of of a trade deal being negotiated, and he said it's going to be far further reaching than any of other of the trade agreements that have been uh, that have been put in place between the US and China. And in terms of kind of big picture macroeconomic news. Uh, that's been pr- pretty much it. We had a fairly subdued session in Asia overnight, but keep in mind we did have a very strong finish to European and US markets at the back end of last week. And it would seem that at least for the first few hours of this, this morning's traders, this this morning's trading traders have seemed to have kind of been uh, be kind of catching their breath as they were kind of sitting on their hands to a small extent. But nonetheless, we hit multi-month highs on European markets and also on US markets only on Friday. So by and large, the sentiment is still fairly positive. Um, in terms of what, 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 what's uh, going on today, uh, we do have a couple of US banks reporting, um, Goldman Sachs and also Citigroup. We're essentially just beginning the process of uh, the latest round of uh, US reporting season. So that's probably going to be dominating the headlines for the next few uh, weeks to come. I'll be talking about that later on uh, towards the back end of the video when I look, when I look ahead to the week ahead. But I'll have a quick look now uh, at the major European markets and see how things are faring up. So it's a pretty, fairly kind of common theme across equity markets, uh, both European and US, is that they've been bouncing back nicely uh, since the back end of 2018. Uh, nice series of higher highs and higher lows. It was only last week we hit um, multi-month high levels not seen since October on the FTSE 100. We're still very much uh, in that upward trend. And should we see uh, the, the bullish move continue to play out on the FTSE 100, we could be looking at targeting this area here, uh, which, which, which is 7,558, the high, highs in late, late September 2018. Uh, and if you do see a drift to the downside, uh, we could see fresh buyers enter the fold because buying on the dip has been a fairly popular strategy for the last few months. So if we do manage to drift lower from here, Support might be found in around the 7,400 area, or for perhaps from this line here in around the 7,370 mark. And even if you have a fairly sizable pullback, support might be might come into play uh, from this red line here, the 200 moving average, which is just north of the 7,200 mark. The 200 moving average comes into play at 7,216. I'll take a look now at what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. Similar situation in the DAX, whereby it's been a nice series of higher highs and higher lows, and a fairly solid upward trend um, in the, for the last few months. We're not too far with that. The highs of today are not too far, essentially, are similar to the highs that we saw last week, so we're pretty much at uh, multi-month highs, highest, uh, highest levels seen since uh, early October. And we're in a, it's fairly clear that we're, we're, we're remain in the, in the upward trend, and should we can continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this, this level in around here, uh, which comes to play in at 12,123. And if you break beyond that, we could be looking at heading towards the late September high in around 12,450, 12,460. If you do uh, manage to drift, drift a bit lower, support might be found from this area in around here, uh, which comes to play at 11,823. And even if you drift, drift below that, Support could be found from this red line here, the truly moving average, which also coincides with a fairly important metric here, uh, which, which is in around the 11,690 mark. Uh, we can see that this that that, 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 that region acted as fairly decent support back in February 2018, and, and it also acted resistance on a couple of times in early 2019, and that, 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 uh, that particular zone seems to be coinciding with the 30 moving average. So the more indicator, the more metrics are kind of overlapping with each other, the more potentially if, 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 uh, the more potential it has to become important in the near term should we drift lower from these levels. But like I said, the upper trend has been in place for, for a number of months. So even if we do have a sizable pullback, 
towards the kind of 11,700 region, 11,690 area, it's likely we could see that the wider upper trend still continue. Uh, the US markets are in far better shape. I'll start off with the S&P 500, which managed to close above the 2,900 mark uh, on Friday. Uh, we haven't seen the market close above that, those levels since, that, since early October last year. So once again, it's all kind of, it seems to be a fairly similar pattern in global equity markets, printing pretty multi, multi month highs. And for the time being, we um, if the, if the upward trend continues to kind of push on higher from here, we could be not too far away from the all time highs. And the all time high in the S and P 500 was up around the 2,940 mark. And even if you do manage to drift a bit lower, and I guess, uh, we we could see a support come into play in around this area here, in in around the. Uh, 2,865, say the 6th region in around here, or perhaps even down uh, at this metric here. Uh, we can see here uh, the uh, 2,817, 2,820 mark, which notice that was a fairly decent important level of, of resistance back uh, at the last quarter of, of the, last, the latter half of last year. Managed active resistance on a few occasions in early 2019, and it's a possibility that the 2,817-2,820 mark um, um, might act as support should we see a fairly sizable sell-off from here. But once again, we've been in a fairly strong upper trend, so uh, most of the downside may attract new buyers. Taking a look at what's going on with the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones, similar observation, multi-month highs that were, uh, were achieved were in a very much a strong words, upward trend. And if we continue to press on higher from here, we could be like you know, heading up towards the kind of towards the psychologically important 27,000 mark. And even if you do manage to drift a bit lower uh, from these areas, support might be found from this area here, psychologically important 26,000 mark. And even if you drift below that, uh, an area of potential support could be this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. We can see how it acted as support on a few occasions only at the back end of last month. And uh, so the 50 day moving average might act as a support again in the near term. And the 50 day moving average comes into play at 25,828. Uh, so we talk about how the equity markets are fairly strong. Conversely, the gold market has been. By and large, strong, but in the last few weeks, a bit weak. Um, so the gold market has been bouncing back since August, but it's really been since about mid-November have we seen uh, a fairly solid upward trend. But we did see a fairly sizable sell-off in, in February, and the, the subsequent push higher in, in March failed to take out the highs of February. Uh, but then again, at the same time, the lows of April are still kind of a, a, above the, the lows of, of March. We seem to be in a, fair, in a bit of a, uh, in a relatively small range, but nonetheless, while we hold above the lows of, of, of March and also the lows of, of January, which is in around the kind of 1280, 1276 region, while we hold above that region, uh, it's likely that we could see the wider upper trend continue. And should we press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the kind of mid March highs of 1324. And should we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting. The highs that we saw in February in around the 1345-1346 region. Um, also, it's an interesting to point out at a fairly interesting level here on the on the gold market. We're pretty much resting on this yellow line here, which is the 100-day moving average, and we can see that the act of support only uh, only only in early April, only last week, and then also it acted as both support and resistance uh, in November and uh, in November last year. So if the metric as a, the track record of being important as support or resistance, um, it, it makes it more likely that we'll do so again in the future. And we're pretty much resting on that mark at the moment. And the uh, 100 day moving average comes into play at 12.86. So if we, can hang, if we can hold above that, we could see further moves to the upside being gained. If you have a fairly sizable break below that, and if you break below 12.76, uh, we could be looking at it back down towards the 12.60 region down around here. Or perhaps even down towards this metric in around here in at 12.50. Take a look now what's going on on the oil markets. The oil markets have been fairly strong. We've been recently ratcheting up multi-month highs, but the volatility has been fairly low on the oil market. So we've been in a solid upward trend since late since late December 2018. We've had levels not seen uh, since November last year. So five-month highs were, were racked up. And if we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here, uh, which comes into play at 73 spot 53 on Brent. 
Um, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around a 77 spot 95. Uh, move to the downside in Brent, Brent crude oil. May find some support from this red line here, the agility moving average, which comes into play at 69 spot 29. We can see that actually has bought resistance and support on a few occasions in this month. And if the metric was important, it was important recently, it makes it more likely that it will be important again in the near term. And even if you drop below that, um, support will be found from the $68 region. We can see that a few occasions, um, there are about that area, sourcing consolidation, so it could be an important metric uh, in the near term. Take a look now at WTI. <coughs> Similar situation where WTI has been bouncing back since late December. We've seen a nice series of higher highs and higher lows, so a classic upward trend in WTI. Very similar situation to what we saw on Brent. Multi-month highs were achieved, levels not seen since, since November, so five-month highs were achieved. And if you continue to press on higher from here, you could be looking at targeting this metric up here, this, this area up here, which comes to play at a 67 spot 80. And if you go head beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the psychologically important $70 per barrel for WTI. And even if you do manage to drift a bit lower, uh, support could be found from this red line here, the two the moving average, which comes to, into play at 61 spot 19. And below that, uh, support might be found from this area here, uh, the psychologically important $60 per barrel. We can see that that area, broadly speaking, acted as resistance on a, few, on a few occasions that the market was pushing higher. So there's a possibility that old resistance might become new support. Take a look now on the currency markets. Starting off with Euro dollar. So Euro dollar here, looking since January, has been in a fairly obvious downward trend. I'm fully aware that the highs in March managed to take out the highs in February, but as, but as you saw, a fairly, uh, we saw a fairly aggressive sell-off yet again um, uh, in, in April. For that, the lows in April failed to take out the lows in March, but we're still very much in, in the uh, in the kind of broader downward trend. If you do manage. Uh, to to, to uh, turn over yet again and, and, and turn lower, we could be heading back down towards the 112 area, uh, but we really need to kind of break below the March lows in around one spot 11 75 76 for us to be kind of more confident that the that we're that we're, that we're going to continue in the downward trend. Should we press on? Should we manage to take out 114 to the upside? Uh, we could be looking to try again at 114.48, which was the, uh, the kind of in around the the March highs, and if you go beyond that. That's the point we could be looking at thinking maybe the downward trend um, has come to an end and should we go beyond that level, we could be looking at heading up towards kind of the 115 region here. Take a look now at pound US dollar. Volatility has really um, drifted off recently in the last few sessions with the granting uh, of a kind of a flex tension. You know, um, the, exit, the, the, the UK's exit date from the European Union has been pushed back to, um, to potentially as long as the 31st of October, Halloween. So in the last few sessions last week, uh, we did see a fairly low uh, trading range on the pound sterling. So the pound has been, broadly speaking, in a fairly upward, obvious upward trend versus the U US dollar for the last number of months. But, while it, but it has been making much headway to, to the north, but at the same time, has been, has, has been holding above the kind of 130 region. Um, keep in mind here that this red line here is the opportunity moving average, and that comes to play at 1 spot 29.75. If you can hold above the trading moving average or up, up, up towards the kind of 130 mark, it's, it's likely that we could see further gains being made. And should we press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 1 spot 32. But if you break below the trinity moving average, we could be looking at getting back down towards this area here, the, uh, the lows in mid-February, in around 1 spot 27.75, that sort of area. I'll take a look now at the week ahead, and the week ahead can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com under news and analysis, uh, you, you will find um, you'll, you'll find the bulk of the articles that myself and um, my colleagues do, my colleagues write, both of the site. So we have a look now at the uh, the week ahead article. As I mentioned at the beginning of the, of the uh, beginning of the uh, of the video, Goldman Sachs and J and uh, Goldman Sachs and Citigroup have first quarter results out later today. Uh, but the two banks are, are major players, and more, uh, major trade, major players, but they occupy different sectors of the banking sector. Um, Goldman Sachs is very much focused on. Investment banking fees and trading revenue, where Citigroup is very much a retail bank. And given that we've had volatility drop off in financial markets, 
And given that we had a kind of flattening of the yield curve because the, the Fed have kind of indicated that, that, that they're not going to be changing interest rates um, for the time for, for, for the foreseeable future, that could uh, impact the, uh, the the bank's profitability. Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, we have full year figures from JD Sports. Tomorrow, also on Tuesday, we have UK wages and unemployment. Tomorrow, also, we have first quarter figures from Netflix. Uh, looking ahead to Tuesday and Wednesday, we have a number of economic indicators coming out of China. First quarter GDP, retail sales, and industrial production. On Wednesday, uh, Wednesday across Wednesday and Thursday, we have UK, re- UK inflation, CPI, and retail sales. On Wednesday and Thursday, we have Canadian retail sales and inflation. And on Friday, we have, uh, sorry, apologies, on Thursday, we have US retail sales. So we have a lot, a lot to, uh, to keep an eye out for a bit um, on the week ahead. Quite a few corporate and economic announcements. Which, so we could see additional volatility being injected into the market. Uh, just before I go, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.